It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the show. Thanks for being with us. With me in the KFG studios, certified financial planners, and some of my friends, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Yeah, today we're going to talk like a champion. <laughs> so I've always had the dream of making this community the most financially literate community on the planet. And when I ask people, is there any reason why we couldn't be the most financially literate community in the world? No one has a good answer. So let's get it done, right? We love this community. We live in it. We want, to th- we want the community itself to thrive. And when you think about thriving, one of the first things that has to come to your mind is Notre Dame football. And their team and this community, uh, their relationship is very intertwined. And so we're very excited to welcome special guest Ron Paulus, who is the director of player development and a former Notre Dame quarterback uh, to the show today to discuss a program that he's put in place for uh, his team to help them turn four years of their lives into a meaningful next 40 years. Or beyond. If you have questions, reach out to us. Don't ask me, you know, how many times, you know, uh, they're going to win this season or anything football related. Ask financial questions. How about that? You can give us a call. Send us a text. 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. You can ask me football questions. I just won't have a great answer. Uh, You can find us online, wisemoneyradio.com or all over social media, Facebook, YouTube, all that sort of stuff. Just search Wise Money Radio. Welcome to the show, Ron. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, you know, it's it's a pleasure to be here and hang out with you guys. Today. Okay, so is it Ron Paulus or Paulus? It's Paulus. Okay, pa, pa. all right. Yeah. Wait, 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 way to go, Kevin. Yeah. I'm assuming everyone you've all <laughs> you say potato. <laughs> it's we... been pronounced a lot of different ways yeah. over the years. Don't worry about Paulus. it. Hey, hey you. So <laughs> there we go. At, Ron really doesn't need much of an introduction. Kevin already shared. He's he's kind of the adopted son to this area, but former quarterback star of Notre Dame in the mid to late 90s. He's now playing a different role on the team. He's director of player development. And uh, before we get into some of the stuff he's doing in that role, specifically something called the 4 for 40 program, Ron, tell us about life right now. Give us an introduction, family, kids, that sort of stuff, wherever you want to take it. Well, life right now is good. Life is really good. Uh, Having the opportunity to be back at Notre Dame is... um you know, it's a it's a thrill for me. You know, I, I left my small hometown of Berwick, Pennsylvania, a lot of years ago, and came to Notre Dame, and had the great thrill of playing here and, and playing quarterback and representing the university for a lot of years that way. Um, you know, had my had my hand and and trying to bounce around the NFL a little bit, and uh, ultimately went to work and and lived back in Pennsylvania, and and life was pretty good until I realized I missed the game. Yeah. You know, I missed. I was watching games on Saturday thinking, what am I doing? Why am I not part of it? And I had the chance to come back here in 2005, came back, and was really in a recruiting role and doing a lot with our recruiting office and and helping recruit kids to come to Notre Dame. Did that for a couple of years and then became the quarterback coach, coached the quarterbacks here, bounced around, coached the quarterbacks at uh, the University of Akron, at Kansas University, and um, then had a chance to come back here in 2015 to be the director of player development. Awesome. Been moving around my wife and I for uh, 21 years. We just <laughs> celebrated our 21st anniversary. Hey, we congrats. have two boys, a yeah. uh, 16-year-old and a 13-year-old. And so for me, it's great to be back, great to be in the area. We love the area. I've spent you know just about as many years in, in this area as I have anywhere in my life, uh, including my hometown. So uh, to raise my kids on our campus and in this area and, and, and be part of this is um, – you know, it's really special to me. And Ronnie's following your footsteps, a quarterback, right? He is. My my oldest is a, is a quarterback in the Penn School District, and you know, rooting for Penn. We're Penn Kingsman fans, and, <laughs> and away can we he, go. Can he beat you up? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a big guy. He is big. He's a little bigger than I am now. Taller, <laughs> taller than I am. Okay. Um, he can't beat me up yet. <laughs> Still got the dad muscles. Yeah, right. Ron's got old man <laughs> strength. Old, old what are you talking about? Right. All right. So let's go back to the playing days a bit. You uh, highly touted recruit here to Notre Dame. One of the, I mean, at the time, I, just coming out of high school, very, very highly recruited. You got to play for Lou Holtz, which is awesome. So talk about that experience as a player, where, where your mindset was at that stage of life. Um, I was uh, really 
enjoying the trip, you yeah. know, enjoying the experience, enjoying the opportunity to play football. Again, grew up in a small hometown where football was really, really important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a town of 10, 12,000 people in Pennsylvania, it was, it kind of epitomized that Friday night lights feeling that's, yeah. you know, businesses closed on Friday afternoons to get ready for the games. And mm -hmm. um, so to come to Notre Dame was, felt pretty natural, you know, where, where, where football was still very centric in, in my life and in my world. Um, you know, and to get the attention I got, I mean, it was, um, it felt normal for the quarterback in Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, and I really, you know, I, 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 I was schooled to be humble from my family and, you know, certainly my high school coach and Coach Holtz um, promoted that as well. Uh, but it was just, you know, I tried to think in terms of the attention I got and the, the, the trip that I was on was as the quarterback in Notre Dame, not as Ron Paulos. I was the quarterback in Notre Dame, um, you know, maintaining that position. Mm. Any, yeah. uh, any, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we, we think of Lou Holtz as a TV personality, a motivational speaker, that sort of thing. But at the time when he's your coach, how much did he get to invest in you from a character development standpoint, that sort of thing, versus just playing the game? In those days, it was more play in the game. Yeah. It was a more, you know, football coaches were football coaches. Now, mm -hmm. Coach Holtz, we had, you know, he had terrific principles, great, great standards to be met and expectations to uh, to uphold and you know that that was the the way we operated and that's the way Notre Dame football operated and coach Holtz was above and beyond a lot of other college football coaches at the time but we didn't have a director of player development we didn't have mm -hmm. uh, these programs off the field um, to prepare us for life after football not to say we were missing anything in the world at the time but it, it just wasn't as evolved at that time. So as an 18-year-old, you were you were a kid, right? When when you came here, we, we were talking about this. Yeah. We, we we looked when when we went and talked to the guys. They look like men, but they are they're they're still young youngsters. So who who uh, mentored you or influenced? Who is the greatest influence during your time here at Notre Dame on you and your life? Well, it's hard to pick out one person. You know, there was a lot of changes. Uh, I had some great coaches. You know, I, I was recruited and my first coach was Tom Clements, who played quarterback here, who was a great reference for me, but he was gone after two years. And, you know, in, and then I had a different offensive coordinator, a different quarterback coach and went through, you know, mm -hmm. was here for the changeover in the coaching staff from Coach Holtz to Coach Davey. So there wasn't a lot of um, stable long-term mentors, if you will, at that time. And it was just, it was a matter of timing. Um, but really my friends and I, and, you know, we're, we're, uh, finding resources to, uh, to model after and things like that. And uh, on campus, um, certainly, you know, I mean, it wasn't on campus, but my family, my father, you know, I mean, yeah. is, is, mm. is, was my mentor at the time and, and helping me get through, um, you know, the ups and downs that come with being a quarterback. Mm. Yeah. That's the voice of uh, Director of Player Development at Notre Dame Football, Ron Paulus. Thanks for being with us today here in the studio with Mike, Josh, and Kevin. So when you are a Notre Dame player, I'm sure every player right now is thinking of big contracts, making it to the NFL, and you, you had a little stint there. And, um, but for the vast majority of the players on the team, on any collegiate team, even elite teams, they just, it just doesn't materialize. So how did you handle that transition? You played a little bit, but mm -hmm. how was it grappling with that? It's a hard realization. You know, it's hard realization when you don't get to play anymore. I know guys that bounced around the NFL for a year or two and then tell me they retired. And I, you know, that that's not really the way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> My career, you, you know, it's time to, time to hang it up. But you know, the, the, as I bounced around the NFL, I, I, as I tell people, my story is not a, a, a great story, but I think it's a pretty typical one. You know, yeah. you go to camp with somebody, you get cut. Then you finish the season with somebody else, and you change teams in the offseason. Then you get cut. Then you move over here, and then you get cut. And you get fired time after time. And, you know, that's a, it's a challenge, but you start to understand that you can't do this forever. Yeah. And, um, you know, my story of, of doing it for four years, again, is, is a pretty um, – typical story that's out yeah. there and that you know that kind of leads me to the thoughts of uh, helping these guys uh, prepare for life beyond the game and that's I, where it all comes from that's what i was just going to mm -hmm. say and the role that you're in now and that's why i asked the question i am assuming that's hard experience you know i went through trying to make it in hockey and it didn't work out and it was tough um, but that experience hopefully you can use that to help the players today and really the question is how can you 
wherever you're at, turn four years into a successful 40. We've got that and more with special guest Ron Paulus here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. How can you use four years to propel the next 40? Well, we're talking about that with Director of Player Development Ron Paulus and the program that he's doing for the Notre Dame team. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group coming to you from the world headquarters of Corhorn Financial Group and the KFT Studios. My name's Mike. Here with me, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and special guest Ron Paulus. Need to say thank you to the attorneys at Ledoux, Kern, and Keene, as well as First State Bank for making the Wise Money Show possible. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, keep them financial related, not football. Give us a call. Send us a text, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyradio.com, and social media. Just search Wise Money Radio. So it's been, gosh, probably two months now. Um, Director of Player Development, star quarterback from the 90s, Ron Paulus, gave us a call, and when he calls, you pick up the phone. Uh, actually, he had to leave a message. took us a couple <laughs> weeks to get back to him. But anyway, I'll leave those details uh, to you. Anyway, and he shared uh, with us a vision of this uh, 4 for 40 uh, Excellence Beyond ND program that he's doing as part of his player development role at Notre Dame. And uh, I'm going to have him share about it. Um, it. It really struck us. And yeah. Kevin's been anxious to talk about it because just doesn't want this to be a secret what Ron and the university are doing to develop these players off the field. Because as we said in the first segment, they're so vital and this team is so vital to their com- to this community as well as the communities they're going to go back to and wherever they're going to live. So this this idea of player development and this 4 for 40 program is an honor to be included and be a part of. And so we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But Ron, before we get into 4 for 40, what are some of the other things that you're doing for player development or what else is encompassed in that role? Well, I have the great opportunity to work with our players, certainly on programming and bringing in speakers and and like you guys came in and presented to the team. So that's a big part of it. Um, I head up our community service efforts, our Irish Around the Bend efforts to get us out in the community and and, um, and, and engage with our campus community, with the South Bend community, with all of Michiana whenever we can uh, as a team, as a group, as individuals. Um, I'm a liaison to the for the guys to uh, our academic support to Mm -hmm. the academic world. Um, I don't deal with professors or anything like that, but our academic services for student athletes who do a fantastic job of supporting our guys. I'm the direct liaison there. So we work on, you know, finding times for the guys to attend to different things that they need to attend to. I can, you know, if they need a guy, I can go down into the locker room and grab them and we go, go handle, handle an issue if we have it. Uh, I deal with the parents of the players. I deal with the compliance on a little different issues and housing. Um, so your hands in a whole bunch of yeah, things, but really yeah. just supporting the players off the field. Yeah, the right? way I the way I like to break it down. You look at our football program. We have the best coaching staff in America, and they are great people. They're great men, fathers, husbands, brothers, and they're good mentors for our players. But their job is to develop the skill of the players. So. Our receiver coaches develop the best receivers in the country. The quarterback coach develops the quarterbacks. The defensive line coach develops the defensive line techniques. We have a strength staff who is, again, I believe Matt Bayless and his staff is the best in the country in in Mm -hmm. developing the physical body. They train them. They get their body ready for battle and combat and stay healthy. And our training staff gets them, uh, you know, healthy and in the training room and sports medicine and the academic support produces, supports them academically, and there's still this gap of citizenship, right? There's yeah. still this gap of being a person in the world, and that's the gap that I try to fill in. So, yeah, I'm, my hand's in a lot of different pieces yeah. uh, of their life, but it's it's trying to just round out that pie of their life. So for those of us who are huge fans and kind of junkies, it, it was interesting to learn. So your, your position as director of player development, so I just assumed, well, you're – you're kind of a coach too, but there are only ten. What did you? Well, they're called, we have countable coaches. Countable and coaches. Only the countable coaches can coach the players um, on their skill on the field, um, direct them um, with footballs, things like that. So it's our coaching staff, and then the graduate assistants. We have graduate assistants that can also do the same. But anybody else in the program cannot. You know, I can't take a football out and throw balls to the receivers someday or I can't work with the quarterbacks or, you know, those are just um, only the accountable coaches can do that. I think the fact that Notre Dame even has a position like yours where 
they are being very intentional about developing the whole the whole player, as you said. That that struck a chord with me as a dad. You know, I think someday when I send my kids off to college or into the workforce, who's going to be there not just to invest in their skill and help them be excellent at their craft, whatever it is that they do, but who who's going to coach them on just life? When I'm when I'm done, you know, being that voice in in their life every single day. So there's almost this. Um, I, I guess I kind of picture this passing of the baton to you in a way. And and in some ways, I pictured you kind of being a dad type figure to some of these guys. Do you? Does that resonate with you? It do you, does. It does. It makes me feel a little older than I want to feel. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I do feel that way, and I do. You know, the guys get into different things, and, and I mean, another piece that you know, I deal with is, is the community standards on campus. So some, mm-hmm. you know, right. you know, guys a parking issue and they have to talk to somebody, you know, and maybe I go and, and, and sit with them while they're um, getting disciplined, you know, things like that. So yes, I do feel that role and I'm not every player on our team's mentor. That, yeah. That's not necessarily mm-hmm. the case. Guys come in and shut the door and talk to me and we try to get through some things that they're feeling or wondering or hoping or wishing. Um, but it's not, I don't try to fill that role for everybody. I do for some, I'm sure, but uh, I want to put them in a position to feel that they are growing as people and, and to know that it's more than, um, you know, waiting till things are done, waiting till life after football. I don't want to wait till life after football. That's why I use the term beyond. We want to be yeah. excellent beyond the game, not just after the game. That's the voice of Director of Player Development, Ron Paulus, here with us on the Wise Money Show. And uh, you you said a phrase when we were talking about the 4 for 40. I'm going to have you introduce that uh, program in just a second because that's really, I, I think, main stage kind of for, for really what you just shared. Um, but you said something when we were out at, uh, at the program. It's hard, almost maybe impossible, to have a player really succeed on the field if their life is a mess off the field. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's very, it's very difficult. And and we so appreciate that you play that role. And just like Josh said, the fact that the university would invest in making that essential just proves again that it's an elite program. So, all right, share, share what is the four for forty program? Well, the idea of four for forty came from recruiting really i mean it was it was a way that we talked to recruits and 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 explaining to recruits that coming to notre dame and 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 making this all-important decision is not you're not just making a choice about what you're going to do for the next four years of your life where am i going to spend for you it's a decision that's going to affect the next 40 years and beyond and that was an important piece of recruiting and it's important piece for parents and recruits to understand and get it but when they got here we weren't really following up Mm. on the language of 4 for 40. Yeah. Yes, we did the programming. Yes, we had the speakers, but we didn't follow up on the language. So using my marketing degree from Notre Dame, <laughs> um, I said, let's create a, a platform where everything we do reminds the guys that they are preparing for excellence beyond. They're preparing for excellence beyond these four years, and that's going to carry them for the next 40 years and beyond. Um, so we came up with different ways to um, compartmentalize things. And we have our 4 for 40 community and com- under community we have speakers presentations interactive opportunities that deal with title nine and gender relations and living on campus and uh, a lot of different things that develop the guys in their community because they have to understand the community they're in we do things that deal with leadership whether it's a speaker or jocko willink a, a u.s navy seal came and mm-hmm. talked to the awesome. team in the spring was fantastic you know we do um, we talk about integration integration into the campus for our freshmen as they come in the door and you know they go from their big world where they were the big fish in the small (laughs) pond to now all of a sudden you're a freshman and you have to figure out a way to integrate onto onto our campus i talked to them we deal with the nfl four for 40 nfl i don't want guys to be worried about the transition i don't want them to feel like they can't ask questions i don't want them to i want them to understand what it's like to transition to the nfl Um, we deal with service a lot of service Uh, we deal with career and of course I, I stick the other the other piece of it is investment, and I call it investment because when you put all those things together, career, leadership, integration, the NFL, investment, um, community, and service, you get the clinics. So they become the four for 40 clinics, and that's kind of the way we put everything together and, and compartmentalize everything for our team as we help develop them off the field. 
we're going to dive into that as well, specifically that that investment one. You know, we would say finance, but I get you got to fit it in the in the acronym <laughs> there. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna break that down a little bit more here with special guest uh, director of player development Ron Paulus. That and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. In the studio with us today, Director of Player Development, Ron Paulus. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name's Mike Bernard. Along with me, as always, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory again, joined by special guests. Thank you, Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett, for partnering with us on the Wise Money Show. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We'll tackle them on an upcoming show. See what I did there? <laughs> uh, just go to wisemoneyradio.com. You can submit your question right there. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. And find us all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube channel is up and running. So you want to watch us in the studio with Ron. And he made a reference to how old he is earlier. You can see how young he is on Facebook just uh, or on, you, <laughs> on you. YouTube. <laughs> just search Wise Money Radio. So we're talking about uh, Ron Trolls, Director of Player Development, and really the platform that he created called... Uh, called 4 for 40 Excellence Beyond ND, and we were um, so appreciative to be a part of that this year, and me, Josh, and Kevin got to speak to the guys a couple months ago. Ron, share a little bit more. Uh, maybe you shared the, the motivation. How long have you had the program? What have been some of the highlights? And if you can, what have been some of the lowlights, maybe? Well, it all comes together because... Our, we have an opportunity to bring our guys back to campus uh, a couple weeks before the summer session starts. And summer classes began on June 18th. The guys reported back to campus on June 3rd. And in those two weeks, the reason we have them back is to develop them, develop them physically, develop them as yeah. people. And, and that's where player development comes in. So that's really created a... a a focused platform for the 4 for 40 programming. While we do things all throughout the year, um, that's become the really the two-week session where we hit something once a day and really try to drive a lot of points home. But um, So we've always done, we've always had speakers, we've always had uh, interaction with the Center for Career Development, we've always had interaction with leadership speakers, but it's become a little more focused and on um, you know, a little more pointed to make it happen in those two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, along with other things throughout the year. Mm -hmm. What I, I don't know, and I'd be interested, uh, Kevin, Josh, to hear your feedback. I was so impressed by, number one, the level of character on the team. I, you know, these, again, they look like men. You know, Brandon almost broke my hand when he shook it. As a quarterback, I think, wow, that dude has some muscles. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Lots of them. Yeah, and, um but you think, well, these guys are just kids who are thinking about football, and they're not going to pay attention. They're not. So, Josh, you know, we better have our A game. But, no, they were – they were – they cared. And they asked unbelievable questions. The very first question, right in the middle as we were talking about having a spending plan, the first question by a player, you need to know this, was about tithe, was about giving. That's a type of, of person that is represented – on, on the football team. And so that just really blew, blew me away. Ron, is that typical? And, um, and are there certain areas where the guys really wake up? They, oh, I'm, I really am interested in this. Yeah. It, I'm impressed with our guys every time they interact with, with people, um, outside the program. And, it, and it's, I, I hear the same thing that you're saying from, other entities on campus, other groups, other people that talk to them that say the same thing. Wow, I had no idea how mature they were. Right, right? they're not mm -hmm. just football players looking to throw a ball around, and um, that speaks to who we recruit. Yeah. It speaks to what we're looking for. That speaks to the leadership of Coach Kelly and our assistant coaches who are out on the road looking for um, that specific kind of player. Right, there's a lot of guys that can play football. They're fast. They can catch. They can block. Uh, but there's fewer that fit the mold, the, the complete mold that we're looking for. Somebody that takes academics seriously, somebody that can thrive in our community, somebody that can thrive in our world of uh, full, total player development on the field, off the field. So it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's fun to watch speakers and presenters be surprised at, 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 <laughs> the, at the engagement our guys have. But um, you know, different topics gets, excite the guys differently. And as I did a survey uh, following um, following our four for four to pro, four for forty programming this year, 
you know, we had Mike Mayock spoke on the NFL. Mike got very high marks as that's a topic that's interesting to a lot of the guys. And Mike is a professional presenter. I mean, right. he, he did a really good job. You guys got very high marks as well. Uh, you you and Mike Mayock went back and forth on on uh, on the two highest rated programs we did this this year. So um, you can feel very uh, congratulations on that. Wow. You, know, you don't you don't get anything for it. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but you get, you get Isn't there a trophy you. somewhere? <laughs> But, but you guys were engaging. You engaged the guys. You gave them things to think about. And uh, same way that Mike Mayock did. And, and, and some, you know, other programs, they feel like they know the content more, so they, right. might, they might not be as excited about it. But um, we got high marks for all the stuff we did. We took them. Um, they spent a few afternoons with the Center for Career Development. Um, our goal was to ensure that every football player on our team coming out of our 4 for 40 program would have – um, a complete resume. They would have a LinkedIn account. They would have an Irish Compass account, which is our on-campus uh, LinkedIn, if you will, that, on our campus, that they w- were prepared to give a 30-second elevator pitch awesome. that they could introduce themselves. Um, so th- those pieces are really important to us. Um, and then we went on a trek to Chicago, and, and we took the team to Chicago, and they visited with the front office with the Bulls and the front office of the Blackhawks, and uh, then they went to a couple different com- uh, companies downtown, and the Center for Career Development people said the same thing, that, man, these guys were so engaged, they asked great questions, they were into it, and it really speaks to uh, the program and the culture that, again, Coach Kelly has created, and, and that's the kind of people we want in our program, and they're a great example of it. Well, and you're also giving attention to their future as well. And these guys have high hopes for their future. You know, some of them that came up and talked to us after the presentation, they were asking questions about careers in financial services. And what do I do when I, you know, graduate and I'm out there in my career? How do I get established financially? They're, they're engaged because it becomes very personal. And if that's uh, those of them that may go on to play in the NFL – Man, that, that's inherently interesting because it's about them as a person. And that, that's why it's so exciting to hear you uh, investing in that, right? You're helping them focus on their future. Yeah, what we want that. I, I want every guy in that room to dream of playing in the NFL. I, I hope we're recruiting guys that want to play in the yes. NFL. That's If we're not, we're recruiting the wrong guys, right? I mean, that's <laughs> yep. what we want. We want the best football players in the country. But when you look at a room of 100 guys, you know – that everybody's not playing in the NFL, mm-hmm. but they are all achievers. They're high achievers. Yeah. And what I don't want is to let them say, okay, well, I'm not going to play in the NFL, so I don't know what I'm going to do now, and you know, I'll just, just go back to my hometown, and who knows. They're achievers, so we want to build on that platform, and that's how we you know, we focus on their future and, and their opportunities. You know, that may be the message for a business owner who's listening today as well, who um, w- wants to – you know, evoke some of that enthusiasm and excitement in their own players, so to speak, their team. Um, the investment that you're making off the field uh, can pay dividends on the field as well. And uh, Mike made the comment about if if your life is in shambles off the field, it's going to come out in the way that you play as well. Can you speak to that? Yeah, that's a it's an important part. We've seen it unfortunately with a few guys. Now, we're not a football program that has a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but mm-hmm. the very few we do, it's a great example that when you are not invested in your life, you're going to have problems. Mm-hmm. And we want the guys to invest. We want them to invest in their campus and their community. We want them to feel um, that they are part of this experience and not just going through it. We last year I, I calculate our community service based on from uh, June first to June first. And in, in last calendar year, we did as a group or a team over fifty five events. I think it was fifty nine events wow. we were at hmm. for over two thousand hours of community service. It's fantastic downtown at the food bank at the center for the homeless at shop with the player. On our campus, you know, the bald and the beautiful. I mean, all these different events Mm -hmm. that we encourage the guys to get involved in because you become part of the experience. I don't, I tell, I told our freshmen when they got here, you're not just surfing through this, you know, get involved, dive into your dorm, get to know people, and you're going to have a better experience instead of just trying to be in the football locker room as much as you can, get out and see people and get to know them. And, you know, those are the kind of things that, um, create the successful opportunities when they believe and understand and feel uh interwoven into our campus and their own and their own experience that's that's why that's why 
Kevin just didn't want to keep this a secret. When when we got to meet Ron and got to hear about the 4440 program and everything that he's doing and what these players are doing to enrich their lives out, off the field as well as the lives um, in the community, um, it's just special. And so we're glad Ron's uh, on the program. Now, we're actually going to talk about some financial related topics. So, and with Ron and intersecting that with these elite athletes, that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name's Mike here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and special guest, Director of Player Development at Notre Dame, Ron Paulus. We're talking finances here in just a minute. We've been hearing about Ron's story and really everything that he's doing to develop players off the field so that they can take their four-year experience at Notre Dame and have that propel them forward in life, wherever that takes them for the next 40 years and even beyond. What a special investment that you make, Ron, to the university and to those players and that the university makes into those players as well. And um, we were... Just to remind you, we were blessed to be a part of it this this past year and um, talking about finances, financial habits with the guys and as part of that 4 for 40 program. Once again, want to remind you, if you've missed anything in today's episode and want to catch it, you can do so on the YouTube channel. You can find us at Wise Money Radio there and subscribe to the channel. You can like it if you like the content. Everything's on podcast as well. If you want to binge that while you're driving around this summer, just search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. That's Corhorn with a K. It's on both uh, iTunes and Google Play. And lastly, online, wisemoneyradio.com. So we've talked about a lot, Ron, and let's get down to it. And we're actually going to start mixing in a little finance as well. <laughs> so um, over the break, we were talking about what is, you know, just got to be apparent to everyone. Everyone on the team wants to make it in the NFL, but very few will get that big contract. And even, well, very few will get the, 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 the contract. Some will dabble, and then, but they just won't make it. But there are two very different paths in life and both financially. How can you help prepare players for those vastly different paths? Well, everybody is going to be done with football at some, some point. And there's, only, there's a few guys in the room that will make enough money that it sets them up for life. Mm-hmm. Um, some guys, I hope, hopefully will play in the NFL a few years and make enough money to give them a good foundation, but they're going to need to do more. Um, the Mike McGlinchies, the Quentin Nelsons that we just saw, those kind of contracts, those are the kind of things that that's lifetime money, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's an incredible financial uh, foundation for you and your family for a long time. Others um, that play for a few years or try to play for a few years – at some point, you need to uh, make up, have a plan, and how are you going to manage the rest of your life? And you know, so many of those things come together in in what we're doing with our with our excellence beyond programming, and that is, you know, the career development, the financial uh, education that you guys provided, um, the community investment that we talk about. So, so many of those things come together, but that's how we try to prepare them for that life beyond the game, whenever that happens. And a huge part of it is is financial. And Mm -hmm. and that's why I invited you guys to come and talk to the team because, you know, the guys have a little bit of money in the, in the world of college athletics. Now they, they, you know, scholarship players get a cost of attendance. Our our players get, you know, about $2,700 on average for the year. And, you know, it's not a lot of money, but it's something that's going to be in their bank account and, and they need to think about it, but it starts to generate more thought. I know there's guys on our team that do not spend a dime of that money. They said, I want to come out of here with uh, with a savings when I'm done with Notre Dame, and I'm not going to spend any of that money. I don't need to. And others think they should go get a credit card and start right. whiling away with the credit card since they have a little bit of money in the bank account. Um, so that's, that's why it's important to me um, to educate them financially. Listen. There's a lot of advisors that want to work with Mike McGlinchey and Quentin Nelson, right? Yeah. Everybody wants to work with it. How much is it? $16 million? Okay, here, come here. We'll help you with that. <laughs> I, I want the other 99% to understand just some basic principles and habits as you guys provided, which is why I thought you were, were really, really valuable to the team. Well, and no one else is teaching on that subject either, right? I mean, most of these students, they're they're studying courses in uh, in school, but personal finance may not be one of them right? Their parents may not have taught them. 
they may go to work someday for an employer that's not making that investment either. Yeah. So the fact that you're having that foresight and have built that into the plan, uh, that, that's what got us fired up and excited about the program and said we need to shine a spotlight on what's going on at Notre Dame. Yeah, there's so many variables, right? I mean, there's so many variables when it comes to financial planning and education. And you, I mean, you guys do it for a living, but you know what you know, what you want to do, how much you know, what to do with the money. There, and and so you know, I don't know that you solve every single person's issue. Right. That's sitting in the room of 118 to 20 year olds, but you start to give them some ideas on on some thoughts, and and that you know it was valuable to hear you give them some habits and things to think about uh, as they're getting started in as, their financial life. As players come to you with issues, questions, things that they're wrestling with, do finances come up often? I mean, just throughout the year, and are, are there typical financial questions maybe that you would get um, to hear from the guys about just sporadically? Y- yeah, the financial issues that our guys have are a little bit more immediate. Related. Right. You know, I, I sure. don't have any money to get home. <laughs> you know, I want to fly home. I don't have any money. How am I going to, what am I, what do I do? I, That's not unique know. to just players. I, so, so yeah, you, you'd say, well, yeah, those are kind of practical needs. No, we're all dealing with practical needs, yeah. right? So. Yeah. And, and it's not, those are things that I can't solve immediately, sure. but you know, we do get into the idea of, listen, when you do get some money, you need to set some aside so you can have it when it's ready to fly home and you can buy your plane tickets. You know, so there is a little bit of those things do come into play. And, um, you know, now I have something to reference back to. The <laughs> can can you talk a little bit about the length of time someone for for the for the for the few that do make it in the NFL? We talked a little bit about this over break, but um, the length of time really really matters. I grew up a hockey player, and I was very well aware of the initial um, kind of the the um, the minors, if you will, uh, what the salary was, and it's not much. You know, fifty grand. A buddy of mine made it. Was playing in Oklahoma City. And he was professional, making fifty grand a year, as opposed to an entry level contract. When you get in the NHL, that's a little bit different. So, the time, the length of time someone stays in the NFL plays a big difference. Uh, plays a big role in their finances. Yeah, absolutely. And and really, the you know, you hear the average length of an NFL contract is, or, or of an NFL career, I should say, is three and a half years, or three years, or three point three years, but you know, that's for the guys that made it. That's right. for the ones that are actually playing in the NFL. There's a lot of guys that bounce around from one team to another trying to make it, like I did for three years. My I didn't have a three-year career. I had a one-year career on a team um, and spent the other couple of years trying to make it onto a team. So you have to take that into account. Yes, if you play in the NFL for three years or three and a half years or four years, you, you could have a nice foundation of money, absolutely. But um, – so it makes a big difference whether you're pursuing it for three years or you're actually playing for three years. And um, the difference in football, there really isn't a minor league. There is no you – right. can't, you can't point. while away in the minors for very long. There isn't. You're either making it or you're not. And, um, and that, that's a challenge. That, that's a challenge for guys. I, I, the point that I would draw out here, and Josh, Kevin, you guys can chime in, is I know a lot of you. I'm a big fan. So you, you watch these players and you see them make it – you know, you see the unbelievable skill that they have, and you think, oh, my goodness, financially, they're going to be set for life. And you think that there's some silver bullet out there. For you, wherever you're at in your finances, it still comes down to how you manage it. Yes, there's a couple people that win the lottery. And in football, there's a lot of luck involved, right? A lot of circumstance, twist an ankle, and your season's done. If you hadn't have had that injury, you know, it, things could have propelled for you. Um, but but f- the vast majority of us, it, it's – you, you've got to have great, strong, foundational financial skills, and that's why we talked about the habits. We're actually going to be sharing those habits with you in next week's program. So whether you're in the NFL or not, you got to learn those skills. Yeah, we often say it's not how much you earn, it's what you do with it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I'm glad you're listening today. I'm glad that Ron was here to share what they're investing in these players, but the, the question for you is, what investment are you making in yourself? What are you doing to learn and grow in your own financial savvy uh, so that you can do better things with the, whatever amount of resources, whatever amount of income it is that you have? Yep. And if I've learned anything from our time with Ron and you say, well, what do we learn from Ron that we can apply to our finances? We'll have a coach. We say that's a certified financial planner. Have a coach. Be prepared. And mm. it's not really about what happens it's about how you respond to it absolutely because there's all kinds of 
possibilities and chances and opportunities. So it's not about what you get. It's about how you respond. And I love to see Ron back here doing a role that they didn't have when he was a player. Yeah. So he's he he has a vision, and he's got the street cred when he talks to the guys because he walked in their shoes. Yeah. He didn't yeah. have to wonder about, hey, can you walk in my moccasins? He did. So it's it it is it, what a what a what a great blessing to have him uh, on our yeah, team. Thanks for being here, Ron. Thanks for being on the show, Ron. Guys, thanks Appreciate for it. having me. It's been a pleasure. All right, on behalf of Ron Paulus, myself, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.